Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we're going to do an Ubuntu auto install of Ubuntu server. So installing Ubuntu server automatically means that we don't have to do any user input and you can see an install here running as I'm talking. So in order to do this we pretty much need to do five different things. We need to fetch and create some kind of configuration file either through installing the system or going through the documentation and choosing different options. Then we need to unpack the actual ISO file that we want to change. Then we need to copy the configuration file in there. We need to create a new grub menu item that will be started well, on the boot of the image. And then we need to package the image up again. So if we switch over to my screen here, we can see that we have a specific directory in an Ubuntu system that I installed manually. So when I install this manually in the var log installer directory, we can find a lot of log files that was written during the installation, but we also found this auto install user data. So if we look at this file, it has the configuration that comes from this installation process that I did. But the most important part here is actually the auto install key entry and the version number. And this is a YAML file. So if you only put in those two, it will install the system with all the user defaults with no extra information. So it will just install it with US um, language, US keyboard, Ubuntu, Ubuntu will be the user. So user password, Ubuntu, Ubuntu. It will use the full drive and so on. So if we want to do other changes, we can use this file. And what I did is taking this file and then removed some stuff that wasn't interesting. So I could actually use the defaults there. So if we switch over to this directory here, I have an ISO image and I have this auto install data that I have slightly modified. So in this, I only have the identity section here where I say which host name it should have. Not that important because I usually change this anyway. Then we have the password and this password is a normal Linux password from the shadow file or you can generate one. And then we have a real name, my name, and then I have the username down here. So that's the identity that user it should create on the Ubuntu system. Then we need to change or could say which Linux kernel we want to use. In this case, I use the Linux generic. It's probably the default one, so I could remove this. And then we have the keyboard section here. I want to use the Swedish keyboard. It's the one that I'm most commonly using. I know the American keyboards. So I could use that as well. Then we have the locale. I like a system to be in, e uh, in um, uh, English. So I chose English, US, UTF-8. And then an SSH server is very important to me. I never use the console in my virtual hosts. So I usually I need to have the password set up so I can log in with password. And also I want to install the server. You could put in a key here so you can actually have key, uh, passwordless login if you want. I usually set that up afterwards, but that could be a part of this configuration file. Then we have the updates, security. So after it has done the install, go out, fetch all the security updates. You could set full updates here. So you have a fully updated system when you have installed everything. Then we have the version number, as we said before, important. And then last but not least, shutdown. I want it to be rebooted off it's done. You could also say here, halt to stop the system when you have done the installation. So now that we have that configuration file, we need to go unpack the system. In my case, I want to create a directory inside of here and unpack even more stuff. So I will create the source files directory where I will unpack my things. So if we look at the command for unpacking, it's pretty simple. We use the XOR ISO uh, command. It's an APT package that you can install in your Ubuntu system or in uh, Debian system. It should be available in both. And then you have this command that is a little this parameter that is a little bit interesting. You just switch the order of the XOR ISO. So it's backwards and it's probably just because you're unpacking the ISO and not creating the ISO. And on here says that you want to overwrite anything in this directory. You're not in, you want to have the actual information extracted. 
Then we choose indev, which is the actual ISO, the device that we want to read from. Then I will extract boot images. And from the beginning, I didn't do this. I didn't have any way of actually booting the image. I just had everything in the ISO. And I believe that the boot images is probably in a different um, partition in the ISO. So I didn't get it when I just extracted the information. So I said, extract boot images, put them in source files boot part. So that's why I needed to create a directory. And then we say we want to extract slash of the ISO into sources files. So if I run this, you see here that it extracted a bunch of images and also the rest of the information. So what we had here was the El Toro catalog. We had MBR code grub, so the normal grub. We have GTP FE, the normal FE. And then we had the El Toro image one BIOS and El Toro image two F UFE. And I will use the BIOS version down here. It works very well with the VirtualBox, but you, whatever you need for your system is the image you should choose. So next up, I need to do some changes to this. So I go into the sources files. I will create a directory that I call no cloud. And in no cloud, I will put the configuration files. And the reason I do that is because this is not a cloud installation. You could actually use this technique to set up a server where you fetch the information during the install. So it will be a network install instead. But in this case, I will just create this directory here, copy over my auto install user data, but I will call it just user data in this directory. And I also need to touch metadata which is another file that we we'll, could use to add even more configuration if you want. And next up, I will edit the grub. So if we go into boot slash grub, and here we have the grub configuration. But if we look at the permissions of grub configuration, it is actually read only. So I need to change this, so yeah, change mod 644 grub config. And this will make it available to me to edit. So even though I own the file, I couldn't edit before it because it was read only. Now it's editable. So if I go in and edit this one, I need to add a new menu item here. So I will copy paste that in. It's very similar to this normal try and install. It has this GFS payload and the Linux image and the init RD. What we add to is is quiet auto install. And then we want the source for the auto install. It's no cloud. And then the source of CD-ROM slash no cloud. And this current ISO image will be mounted into CD-ROM slash CD-ROM. And in there we have the no cloud directory. Another thing that I usually edit as well is the timeout up here. So I usually set that to five because I don't want to wait 30 seconds for it to choose a boot option. Five is just enough for me if I wanted to choose anything else. So let's save that. Now my grub is ready and I will go to the source files directory. So the root of my ISO image and here I can pack it up. So when we package it up, we will use a uh, pretty long command here but most of them are self-explanatory. So first off, we have this make ISO FS, so my make ISO file system. We could use some CD-ROM option here as well. Look at the documentation. And then we want to say, uh, we want to add a bunch of information so it can be read in different systems. So we do dash R for the rationalized Rocket Ridge directory information. We put in the Juliet no, uh, directory information. We also say that this should have the volume ID of Ubuntu auto install. So if you have it on a USB stick and put it into a system, you can see the name of the USB stick as auto, uh, Ubuntu auto install. So you can actually identify it. Then we want to set the boot load size. So this is the number of sections to be in our boot sector. So I put that to four. We want to add the boot information table into the ISO. Um, so, and then we want the input char set UTF-8. So we want to say what kind of uh, char set should be used for the files inside of the ISO. And uh, then we have the Altoro alt boot. So that's what I will use. I will use an Altoro image. So I need to put that in. 
Dash B is actually the El Toro boot image that we want to use. So that's in the boot partition. El Toro image one BIOS image that I've extracted before. Then I say that this is not an emulation boot. And then we do a dash O for the output file. And this should be in dot dot installer ISO. And then dot is the actual root of our ISO file. So if I run that, it will package it up and create an installer ISO. So if I go down to this directory, we see that we have the installer ISO. And that is what I used in the beginning of this video that you saw the in automatic install. I used that in VirtualBox in order to run my installation. You could use it for an, uh, an ISO that you write to an USB stick or a CD-ROM if you want to do that or a D DVD. So this is how I use it in order to package up an Ubuntu server uh, to make it auto-install. This was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.